Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living Inside of Your Aquarium. Today we are going to be talking a little bit about a pH tester, uh, getting a digital one. And uh, this is just because I don't always trust the API. There's room for error in how you uh, add drops to the vials. Maybe you get a little bit more, maybe you didn't shake it up enough. Whatever the case may be. I wanted a backup method, and uh, electronic is, you know, the gold standard for sensitivity. And so I bought this one, which is a Vanta Cool. It looks like is the brand. I bought this on Amazon for twenty bucks, and uh, we'll see how it works. It looks to be working well so far. So what I did is I got myself some. Uh, distilled water which probably shouldn't be called mountain mist but whatever it's a little misleading it could be spring water you don't want spring water you don't want drinking water you want distilled water steam distilled or uh, ro distilled however you want to say it um, but what i'm going to show you is basically how we calibrate this and then we'll show you working on a couple fish tanks so First of all, you've got, and you're not going to see this display just because of the light today, uh, it's not backlit, but basically you put the tool into uh, 250 milliliters, which is uh, essentially a cup, and you put it into some distilled water, and that cleans the electrodes, and then what you do is you want to either blow slightly on it, you don't want to spit on it, but just lightly blow so that it evaporates off and then you want to take a paper towel and wick away according to the instructions on this brand wick away the moisture now this actually happened to come with packets so there's a 4.0 packet and there's a 9.18 packet of ph and you mix that into distilled water and it will give you, uh, and here is the main uh, calibration powder, but assuming you're at room temperature, that will give you a reading somewhere close to that, and that's what you'll calibrate. If you're just working in the 6 to 8 range, you can probably calibrate mostly with just a 1, but you want the high, mid, and low end of the spectrum, and this little electrode here is measuring electronic conductivity of the water and then it has a controlled amount of some fluid I don't know if that's an alcohol or a water in there and then it has electrodes sticking into it which read the time that it takes for the resistance in the water and that's all in millionths of a second or hundredths of a second depending on what it is it's testing does those calculations in some basic circuit boards so you don't have to you could do that with an electronic um like a tds meter that has electronic conductivity for water but you would need to know the temperature you would need to know the volume you'd need to know uh the the what is making up the TDS in there. So there's, this is a way easier way to do it. So I've mixed in a packet of the 4.0 solution here. And so you put your TDS meter in, you, let's see if we can see it. Oh, you can see it. So you put your TDS meter in here right now, it's reading some errors cause it's still slightly damp, but it should go back down to zero. And so when we put it in here, you don't want to submerge it too far but it's gonna give me 4.11, and that solution was exactly 4.0. So it may be that some of the crystals didn't dissolve fully, whatnot. Um, we're gonna rinse that off in distilled water, just so there's no icky things to get to the electrode to throw it off. You wanna probably turn it off in between these steps, and then lightly blow. Your, your your breath actually has chemicals and minerals and things like that in it that can throw things off too when we're talking real, uh, when, we're, when we need real specific calibration. But for me, I just need to know within 0.25. Um, and remember on the pH scale, a 6.0 versus a 7.0, that's a tenfold difference. It's like the Richter scale with a, with a earthquakes so it's a big difference it's an exponential scale so it's a hundred times is it a hundred times from five to in any case it's exponential uh, from five to seven so turn it back on it should give us a readout of zero or something near there then we're going to stick that 
in here it's supposed to read 6.86 and it's reading it's a little colder and that will affect it I don't know if you guys can see this but it is reading 6.8 6.9 and let me show you something real quick as I wash that off back in the distilled water and then you want to wick it off according to this uh, person who wrote the instruction manual for this company which again uh, Vantacool and that was on Amazon it's on Amazon Prime came here overnight which was nice I live in Seattle so it's a hub but right now we're not at 77 degrees as you can see on the packet we're actually cooler than that and we're closer to 59 degrees and so the fact that it came up as 6.9 that's just fine that that's you know ideally you want these at, at warmer temperature we keep our house a little cooler our house is about 60 degrees lastly you're going to do the same thing for the 9.0 solution which has been mixed in here you can still see some of the crystals so it probably needs a little more mixing i have done all this and it's settled back out but Let's go test this on the tank. So this will be one second for you guys and uh, a couple seconds of cleaning off electrodes and stuff like that for me. So I'll meet you over at the tanks. All right, so here we have a tank with some crushed coral in it. My tap water seems to be coming out around 6.5. So we'll see what it says according to this tester. I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 and let's give it a go. So when we turn the tester on, right now I'm getting zero. Then you're gonna put it in to about halfway in the tester. You guys probably can't see this super well. Maybe, there you go. So we're getting a 7.4547.46. It kinda takes a sec to dial in. But it uh, looks like around 7.5, which makes sense because I added some crushed coral to this tank. And now what's important in between uses, as you can see, I have some, uh, some Petco uh, stuff that a buddy got for me. And uh, I'm going to be planting some of that and just trying to grow it out for him in a CO2 environment. So that's a project for later today. Uh, also, I've got my fish racks set up downstairs so lots of things going on and uh let's see what else is going on so let's get this all cleared off and we will move to the next tank so let's move to this big tank because it could be all all funkity so we put it in swish it around that's important it says for this brand anyways and we're getting a lower reading in here just slightly we're getting around 7.3 which makes sense there's a little bit of crushed coral but uh, tap water being neutral at 7.0 that makes sense so that's all good so we'll do one more test tank of what is going on upstairs and then we will do uh, the downstairs one for the uh, Caradina shrimp, which should be quite different. So this tank, we have quite a bit of crushed coral in it, and it is running around 7.7, 7 7.5, 7 7 something like that. Uh, it settles in, and you can kind of get a rough estimate, but it's easier than trying to subjectively interpret the API stuff. So... That makes sense. There's crushed coral, there's silicate in here, as well as some uh, stone, one piece of which has a little bit of uh, siltstone or sandstone uh, type environment to it. Uh, and then also we have decent aeration, which always raises the pH because the water's low in the tank currently, you can see all those bubbles. So that is another important factor. Your pH will jump, as will your ammonia. It, it all changes uh, with air exposure, like when, when you're traveling with fish that have been not exposed to that. So that's just a little tip for you guys, and I'll meet you downstairs in a moment. All right, here's the ultimate test, and I'm doing it with you guys here. Uh, because this is the Brightwell substrate. Also, you can see that I did not get all the moisture off of the uh, tester head. 
because it's still registering all sorts of funkiness. So I'm going to have to wick that off. If you can see carefully in here, there's these funky electrode uh, things that are pretty sensitive. So let me wick that off real quick. All right, and we're back. It's zeroed out. And in this one, we've got Brightwell substrate. We've got the Caradina shrimp in here. Sorry about the glare. There's some natural light coming in that's brutal uh, for trying to film. But we've got the Caradina shrimp. They're just chilling. They don't move a ton compared to the Neo Caradina and the Malawa. We've also got some killifish in here, and this is a relatively new tank, even though the media is from an old existing tank and we have lots of things to suck out nitrates and ammonia and things like that as well as places for the Achilles to lay eggs so let's test it the bright well is supposed to bring down the pH somewhat to maybe 6.5 or something along those lines so let's see what we're getting in here it's dropping So we're down, we're getting down, we're getting down, y'all. 6.4, 6.5, that's spot on to where the the substrate could be, the catapa leaves and things like that could be absorbing a little bit more of the acidity. Looks like 6.46, 6.45 is going to be the uh the answer there so that's great that for for caradina shrimp that will that will work we might bring it down even a little bit more um we'll have some remineralizing salts and buffering salts and things like that now we're going to come down a rack these are my lacunja cribs uh and they laid eggs the other day i moved their rack like an idiot and i moved it from upstairs to downstairs this got all dusty and cloudy, and I don't know if they ate their eggs because they were no longer viable, or if they moved them, or if there's some secret snail or planaria in here that I have not found, but for some reason, all the eggs are gone, so I'm kind of freaking out about that, but, you know, hopefully they, did, they reproduced within two weeks, hopefully they will recover, do it again and I will leave them alone this time. But I may be surprised. Sometimes they put them in their mouth and they hide them elsewhere. Like the, the female's been hanging out back there like as if she's got a stash of something going down. So this tank, you can see there's crushed coral in it. There's sand. There's just, there's just a mess of stuff in here from years of uh, piling it in. So let's turn this bad boy on and put it in. I'm assuming it's going to be somewhere around neutral. And, uh, yep, we're getting 7.35, 7.4, wave it around a little bit just to make sure. Sometimes that drops it or raises it a bit. But we're still hanging right around 7.3, so that's just fine for me. Uh, if anything, I could bring it up a little bit with some more crushed coral. They like acidic water with low TDS. It's just I don't want to boost that TDS super high right away. Um, so that is the only drawback to doing that. But I hope you guys got a kick out of me trying out this new pH tester. Maybe it taught you something. Maybe it didn't. Maybe you're already doing it. You're miles ahead of me. But it is a nice, you can see I'm in my pajamas. That's the nice thing about working on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, so, and the other thing that I wanted to point out before I end the video is uh, that we've got the clown killies or rocket killies in here and currently you know they're black and white stripe but they're with some Michelin or crystal black a mix of the two uh, shrimp and I think they go together quite fittingly so maybe we'll get some other black and white something or other but my goal is there's five killies in here three females and so they're looking less egg laden than even just a day earlier and I think that they have laid some eggs in this bramble so the fact that there's only two shrimp in here and one snail and three killies i think i can remove the killies and let the eggs mature uh on their own and hopefully we'll get a killie uh batch and i will put in some micro worms and some uh baby brine shrimp so other note on this keep it 
covered. Do not press the calibrate buttons on these things unless you're ready to calibrate with those water mixtures or you know for sure the pH of something. Uh, also want to point out that this thing is a mess. I need to zip tie all the wires and stuff. I'm kind of just monkeying around with what will fit where and how things are going to work. But uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me. This tank will probably be a new grow out tank. And I don't know, I don't think I'm going to do anything on top, at least until I get um, a new power head for like a power vac head for the uh, Python type thing. I don't have a Python. I need to get one of those too. I've been doing this all manually with a bucket and a gravel vac. So or tube. All right, guys. Well, take it easy. This was the Vantacool. Uh, paid for it, obviously myself. So I'm not. In, they're not endorsing the channel. I'm not endorsing their product or anything in particular. But it seems to be working pretty good. And maybe I can find you a link for that. Uh, if not right away, I'm still trying to get all my affiliate links in order. So if not right now check back and i can have a link or you can just google it whatever but if you go through me a lot of times i get like two percent you know whatever commission for finders fee sort of thing and that's one way we can support the channel if you were going to buy it anyways doesn't change the price for you helps me out a little bit so win-win all right guys well i hope you have a great day i hope this was uh mildly interesting it's kind of boring honestly but I will chat with you later. Take care of your fish. Take care of yourself. And swim on. You like this? This lamp? It's ghetto to the max. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.